So I wanted to let you know, <clears throat> I've been outside the last couple days getting my uh, yard and everything prepped because we're supposed to have a lot of rain uh, on Sunday. It's Saturday right now. Going to the Atlanta Coin Show tomorrow. This is a huge precious metals. Should be able to interview a lot of the bigger dealers, but I want to talk about my garden. You remember just a few weeks ago, I converted my garden for fall and I have got some fantastic growth it's it's just amazing gotta show you my peppers and everything are still doing good i just came out here and picked probably two gallons of jalapenos and uh probably a couple pints of uh these tabasco peppers so i'm still getting tons of production i've got an empty bed here i think i'm going to plant this with uh, garlic but over here is spinach that stuff still not quite taken off and i lost a couple plants but uh, this uh, rain from uh, God should help things tremendously. The This is a cauliflower, and over here is cauliflower. This is still my Egyptian walking onion. i got to pull these things out and uh, go ahead and harvest them. My tomatoes are still producing, but I'm getting quite a bit of that uh, blight again because I just don't spray anything. <clears throat> I just pulled all kinds of tomatoes off over the last couple of days and I got to pull some more because the rains will make them split if you get too much rain. But this is a broccoli and collards mixed in here. So this is a big old broccoli plant. I don't know if you can see these things. They're humongous and I probably shouldn't have planted things so close together. But, uh, you know, each time you do this stuff, you, you learn and just see how big things are going to get. This is Brussels sprouts over here. And behind them, I have uh, some peas. And I noticed I did have some peas on a couple of these that I've got to pick. And then I've got one uh, volunteer cucumber plant that's coming up. I don't see any heads on anything yet, so we're, we're getting there. My lettuces have been fantastic. We've been eating the crap out of my lettuces. So I've got butternut and uh, red leaf lettuce. Yeah, here's my peas. See, I've got a few peas on here. And we need some rain bad. And then uh, over here, <clears throat> this is a rutabaga plant. Just amazing how tall everything is. And then this is cabbage. And then this is kale. So I got to get out here after we get some rain and I'm going to plant uh, all my garlic. I got tons of garlic I'm going to plant. And then uh, I've got some more uh, bulbils from my Egyptian walking onions and I'm going to plant them in that bed. Over there I'm probably going to have a full bed this year or this coming year uh, for my onions. Now over here, this is some more collards. This isn't an opportune area right here because it's uh, kind of only gets the afternoon sun. <clears throat> but I was kind of limited what I could put here. And here's all my uh, bell peppers and uh, jalapenos. Still got quite a few on here. But I picked off the big ones and so I'll have more after we get all these rain. Now I want to show you, uh, this is something a lot of people may not be aware of, but milorganite is a fantastic fertilizer. And you can use this in your uh, vegetable gardens, you can use it on all your plants, you can use it on your lawn. And this is what I originally used it for in Florida was my lawn. So I came out here and I hit this with a pretty heavy do dose and then I overseeded uh, my grass. Because we just haven't had any rain and it's uh, kind of hurting anyways. And so when I get the fertilizer going uh, with the seeded grass, and this grass is uh, coated and it's colored as well, so you can see it on here. And I use my uh, Scott's Drop. It's actually a, a spreader over there. That, that really works good. But anyways, this milorganite is uh, fantastic. It's actually uh, composted uh, human waste, and it's very safe. And uh, it, it's, not, it's a low nitrogen. It's exactly what the grass needs, and it releases it slowly. We got a lot of our marigolds uh, planted and trying to keep them alive. These are hydrangeas. Just This is chick seed, I think it is, and I got a lot of these different bulbs. Now, one of the things that I have is uh, Encore azaleas, and they're just now starting to bloom. 
they'd probably be doing a lot better if we ever got any rain but i've been trying to keep out here and keep up with them i just gave everything just a little trim to help get some of these blooms going but you'll notice these white ones started blooming a month ago but the pink ones are now starting to kick up but one of the things i did on my yard is i used all of these retaining wall blocks and i made uh, little circular beds along both sides of my driveway and i've got a mixture of azaleas and i got a few gardenias mixed in here and then uh, climbing roses just gave all my roses a good trim because we're about ready to go into winter time anyways you can see some of these azaleas are doing better than the others it's been very stressful Now this is a camellia plant and this is going to have some fantastic blooms. This thing gets uh, I think like 10 or 15 feet tall. So this is going to be a fantastic when it uh, gets going. But uh, again over here on this side of the driveway I've got more of the azaleas. And then this is a climbing rose plant. I had to trim it way back. It, w it went crazy. But this is only the first year of planting it and I must have had a fantastic location because you can see how high that thing grew. And it was about four times as wide as that and I just trimmed it all back I highly recommend these uh, Encore azaleas because you get uh, two blooms you'll get a, a spring and a fall bloom and I'm kind of waiting for some cooler weather for these things to kick out a lot of my azaleas are hurting a little bit but those white ones seem to have done very well the ones in the back are like a pink and red combo. So another thing that we did this week was we stained my uh, shed. And this is a 12 by 12, but 11 and a half feet tall, at least to this edge. And I think it's a little taller on that uh, ridge there. But anyways, I used this Olympic Elite from uh, Home Depot. And this is supposed to be lifetime, especially on vertical surfaces but uh, this is a homemade shed using Virginia pine for my property I actually had a sawmill cut up trees when I cleared for my driveway and everything I just realized I still got plastic up on a window I got to paint the trim here and the doors and everything still but uh, this is this is some good stain the curious thing was I was trying to match my house I was trying to get that color and you can see that the, the walkway came out closer than what I was hoping, but that's pressure treated where that's not pressure treated because it's rough sawn. It just soaked it in like crazy. So it came out super dark. So, you know, 10 years from now, it may be closer to the house color. We'll see. Thought you might want to see the dogs. They're doing so good. What you doing? What you doing? What you doing? What you doing? How's your good boys? How's your good boys? He says, don't, he says, don't tease me. Don't tease me. Come on. Come on. <laughs> well, that's too close. <laughs> that's too close. You good boys. You good boys. He doesn't bark for barbs. He barks for me, though. These dogs are ridiculously attached to me. But they're rescues. And I spend a lot of time with them. Loving them up. They're spoiled rotten. Lucky's been doing so much better now. He still has a terrible separation anxiety when I leave. But uh, Dougie did too. And it, that's what happens with rescues. And it just takes time to, uh, to work through that. Now, I just want you to know, I already did this video once. But I, apparently I didn't press the record. So I'm doing it again. Maybe it'll be even better. One of the things I've been working on is uh, walkways because this Georgia clay, when it gets wet, it is like ice. So here's another walkway that I made today. And this has got to actually come up one more level because this is a pretty good slope here. So that's the uh, bottom level. And then I'm going to bring another level up and kind of carve it out and just make it so it's uh, we have just something to walk on. And then I'm probably going to make a walkway all the way over here to the gate. And I make these uh, uh, dog kennels. This is a 6x10, and this is my rabbit nursery in the wintertime we use this. 
And this way I can put tarps all the way around. In fact, there's one on the back of this already. And we're, we're, we haven't got to cold weather yet, so I haven't put the tarps up. Down there is where I have my chicks, and you can see I've got the tarps up on that one. But connected to this on the other side is a 10 by 10 dog kennel. And these are my own homemade uh, rabbit hutches. So because this is 10 foot long, I have two five foot rabbit hutches and then two sections in there that are divided up. And then we just have uh, concrete mixing basins underneath to catch the hay and poop and then we just haul it out. But this 10 by 10, this has two uh, smaller chicken coops inside for you know the hens to lay their eggs and stuff. I had these before I had this whole covering, but this covering is really easy to do. Just take some two by fours, run them across, and then uh, screw your metal on top. And then we tied it to the top with some uh, fairly, that wire is not as heavy as what we used down there. I need to come back and improve this. But on this one, we raised it up um, with cinder blocks around, and then I took bags of concrete inside there because it just uh, it just was always nasty, and so this way it's very easy to rake out. We just use the pine chips, and uh, it it's a fantastic way to um, raise your chickens. So I have all my hens in here, and each one of these things, I think this one has two nesting boxes on that one, and then that one has three nesting boxes, and then I built a 2x4 perch for the chickens to get up on, and they absolutely love that. That's filled up every night. And then I've got, you know, one of those five gallon water containers and it's sitting up on a, a deck support that's high enough where it doesn't get a lot of chips in, wood chips. And then this is uh, one of those pretty, pretty good sized feeders, but it's sitting inside another pan. And I find that doesn't waste a lot of the food that way. Down here is another one of the walkways that I've done in the last couple weeks. And it's just a, it's a pain in the butt to get these retaining wall blocks all the way from the driveway over here. And, and then you got 80 pound bags of concrete, hauling them and dumping it out. And I mean, we're not making this all pretty. This is a working area. Then I actually put uh, concrete on the front of this with some boards uh, to stop water from getting inside where the chicks are. And we had some torrential rains, even though I got a covered roof, we were getting water in there and just making a big mush now this should stop a lot of that I'm trying to redirect it around the whole place but um, so this is my nursery and where i grow out my cornish rocks you can see them in there they're already uh, about a month old i got to get a weight on them now they should be about four to five pounds already because they only have three to four weeks left and then I've got all my rabbit hutches here, and this is under a big cover. And this is, uh, this is like um, probably one of the best ways I've seen for raising rabbits. They're raised up off the deck, and the poo just falls down. The chickens will scratch underneath there. We don't even get any bugs anymore. When we first started, before we had the chickens uh, free-ranging, we used to get a bunch of gnats, but now the chickens keep that turned over and we don't even get any gnats anymore. It's fantastic. And then I got a catch basin on the back side. I'll show you so we can take all the poo and I use it in my garden. In fact, I'm building a big food plot over here. I think I showed you earlier that I have these uh, fruit trees down at the bottom and these are fruit cocktail trees. So there's, you know, like if it's a peach tree, there's five different types of peaches, five different types of plums on the next one five different types of pears, on and on and on. So it's fantastic. And then this is the hill that I rototilled and we actually planted watermelons. We had tons of watermelons this year, but I now need to come back, uh, weed it out and then rototill it and fill it up with rabbit manure again. And uh, I don't know, there's, pro there's probably not much I can do through the winter time, but I'll s start getting it ready for uh, springtime. Um, I have so much rabbit manure, I, I now do not need to buy cow manure at all because this will just automatically, uh, and there's my big water tank that catches water right off my roof. I'm hoping over the rains we get over the next couple days that this will uh, fill back up again. But I got to prepare this area down here, rototill it, get a bunch of rabbit manure mixed in while I'm rototilling. I've got a, a really 
significant rototiller now. So this is on the back side of my deck here, and this is what I was talking about, my rabbit poo catch basin. And this has a lot of poo because I've taken this one edge this year and I took 35 five gallon buckets out of here. And I doubt I even used 25% uh, of the poo that's caught here. But the rabbits, they'll actually just keep filling this up. The chickens will scratch it down and it just keeps replenishing. But instead of it running all the way down the hill, I've got it caught here. I even have some more boards where I can make it a little taller. But the problem is it makes it difficult to dig it out when it's any taller. But the chickens just, uh, they work this all the time. And it makes it a fantastic fertilizer. It's, it's not a hot fertilizer like chicken or cow manure. You don't have to compost it. It's ready to use. So here's some babies. I had some out earlier, but they've already got their hair and everything. So these guys are probably approaching two weeks old. But they're so cute. All different colors. And the mama, she's a fantastic mama. But she's like, why you got that bright light on me? So here, this mama only had two babies. And when that happens, you end up with some massively large rabbits because they get all the milk they want. That other one, there was seven babies. So it's got to be, you know, a problem for the mama. Now, this is a sweetheart here, too. She's a good sized rabbit. But uh, I'd prefer to see some bigger uh, babies, but it doesn't work out that way, especially when she had them. It was super hot, so that's stressful on the mamas. Now, these are primarily what I like to raise are these white. They're New Zealand whites, and uh, these are probably about a month old, and they're doing fantastic. Again, a small batch. Now, you know, the mamas will have the next batches will be uh, seven to nine babies, and we'll do well. But I've got to actually start saving some of the males and females to uh, replace some of my older male and female. Hey everyone, I kind of forgot to put like a little intro on here, you know, like uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening all over the world. So you're going to get it at the end. But uh, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this uh, little show. Uh, just wanted you to get an update of uh, the garden, how it's doing. And uh, I'm now getting ready to start, like I said, the the things you're supposed to start in October and November, which are my some of my onions and uh, garlic. But I hope everybody's treating you well. I hope you're doing well. Do the best you can. God bless.